So when I got invited to speak today at Chicago Booth, I was so excited. I started Googling a bunch of stuff about personal branding. Like I watch YouTube clips, articles, blogs, what have you. So I started doing my own research. I quickly realized that personal branding had a very different meaning to me. So you guys are probably wondering, what, what does that mean? Well, I thought personal branding is more of a lifestyle. So if you really want to know what that's about, buy my book. It's coming out March 27th. <laughs> but because we only have 10 minutes today, I'm going to share with you guys three stories that really helped me understand what personal branding is all about. So chapter one, owning your own identity. <clears throat> so I actually moved to uh, moved back to America at the age of 16 from Korea, um, I guess the second time. It might be hard to imagine, but at that time, my English was broken, um, and I had this really funny Minnesota slash Korean fob accent thing going on. So I was an awkward high school, uh, high school kid. So that's me in high school, actually a few years back. So, um, but yeah. <laughs> Um, but the funny thing is, I entered college, I guess I wasn't ready for college at that time. So two months in, I ended up dropping out of college to start my own network marketing business. Surprisingly, I was really good at sales. I started making $10,000 a month. And the funny thing is, we were selling outdated beepers, refurbished cell phones, long distance phone services in neighborhoods in Compton and Inglewood. And I quickly became the number three regional director in the state of California. I was signing up so many students that professors, faculty, professor, assistant professors and stuff like that were sending out emails to students not to take meetings with my team. So why was I so successful? Well, I'm sure you guys kind of saw this during launch week, but 7% of communication is through words. The other 93% is actually nonverbal. I knew I couldn't fix my accent or the funny way I spoke English overnight. So I just decided to own my identity as a Korean fob guy. Furthermore, I realized I could flip the script. So what I said was during these sales meetings, I would basically say, I make $10,000 a month and my English sucks, so you could probably make more. It became a very compelling sales pitch. So I learned two things when I was 18. Own your identity to build your own personal brand and figure out how to flip your weaknesses into strengths. The next thing I want to talk about, chapter two, is there's a huge difference between self-promotion and branding. Um, my friends and I wanted to start a company called DealFlix. DealFlix was like a price line, but for movie deals. The trouble with DealFlix was that it was a two-part battle that we had to fight. We had to get users, then we had to get theater owners. And what was so challenging about that is that most of the theaters that we were signing up were mom and pop independent theater owners. That means we had to fly out uh, rent a car, book a hotel, drive out to the boonies, and wine and dine theater owners, because the movie theater industry is actually like very old school. So all, the, all business deals are done face to face. So as a groundbreaking business strategy, I decided to live in a van with my sales team, drive around the country for over two years to build my startup. This is what it looked like. At that time, I was really embarrassed to share this story with anyone. What kind of startup, like, has their whole team live in a van. What was really interesting though at that time, we were already covered by CNBC, uh, Boston Herald, Oakland Tribune, just to name a few. And despite the fact that my co-founder wanted us to talk about this in the media, I, was, I wasn't ready. It wasn't until South by Southwest that my co-founder bumped into a reporter and he was like, dude, you gotta interview this guy. This guy lives in a van with the sales team. And I was so angry, I just started like staring down at him but it was too late. So just kind of like how I did before, I owned my story and I gave the reporter a compelling and strategic reason why we had to live in a van. Well, the story caught fire. So we were featured on Pando Daily then, New York Times, LA Times, The Verge, and then um, Korea, China, Germany, and a few other countries. So why was this story such a big hit? Well, the difference was that we weren't self-promoting a product or a service. We were building a brand. And the difference between branding and self-promoting is that branding inspires people, whether it's personal or not. By inspiring people, you're telling that they could do something great too someday. 
And what our message was basically telling anyone with sheer grit, you can build a Silicon Valley tech startup that's reputable. And that's what made DealFlix so special. I still talk about it in some of my articles, by the way. OK, so chapter three, sharing your brand. So fast forward a few years uh, from, uh, from the Man Van days. <clears throat> I was actually fired from my own startup. I was 31, and this could have been a huge devastating blow to anyone. Investors, clients, uh, some of my business colleagues saw it as a huge personal failure, and they even saw it as recklessness for putting myself in that kind of situation. What was so fascinating about that experience was that people were actually hurt by what happened to me. To them, my man van and the DealFlix story was inspirational, and they just could not comprehend what had happened. <coughs> At that time, quite frankly, <laughs> I didn't care. I was tired. A lot of people didn't know this, but we had co-founder issues since day one. So as the company grew, it no longer had the vision that I had. It was time to move on. And I was, in fact, happy to break up from a business, bad business, uh, toxic relationship. Another thing that I realized was that at that time, my personal brand was so strong I no longer had to apply for jobs. I didn't have to make a single phone call or brush up on my resume. I was getting a few offers to run a couple companies, and I ended up taking a position as a C-level executive for a subsidiary of a publicly traded company to oversee 40 people. I realized the power of what personal branding could do for you, and I already had set a reputation as a really strong, I, I guess I would say a wartime executive that just had a killer instinct. Now, during this time between when I got fired and hired, I had a lot of downtime. I had about six months to think about what to do. And what was so fascinating at that time was that I would research all these co-founders that got fired from their own company, but very few co-founders are willing to talk about it despite the fact that it happens frequently in Silicon Valley. I felt alone. No one really understood what I was going through, so I decided to write. I read my journals from when I started like 16 years ago, and I wrote, and I wrote, and I wrote, and I wrote, and I wrote. And then I decided to write a book. But my book had to be intoxicatingly genuine and almost maniacally original. And the only way I could write a book like that is if I were to publish it myself. So from the design, the attitude, the text, from merchandising, I wanted to own the whole process A to Z. Halfway through my book, I wanted to share pretty much my nonconformist way of looking at the world, the business world, that is. So I submitted my articles to Forbes, CNBC, Huffington Post, and they got published. In fact, Inc. Magazine gave me my own column called The Nonconformist Way of Business. Oops. So I guess what I want to share with you guys today is that the first step to building a personal brand is owning your identity. Second, build a brand that inspires others. Because when people follow you and you can motivate people from within, you can then truly break the rules of business. And don't forget, don't take your personal brand too lightly. Because if you get fired like me, one of these, one of these days, it might be able to help you. Um, and I think that's what personal branding is all about. Thank you. <laughs>